I, I can see myself making a, a mental conscious decision to want to act in harmony with love. Yeah. But my habits are so ingrained that I'm automatically and unconsciously drawn to act in a way that is not loving. So, and can I, can I stop you there for a moment? This is the thing that's so important to understand. We, you know, we feel that most people don't understand exactly what you've just stated that you now at least understand. And that is that, that just because you have an intellectual desire to do something in harmony with love, it doesn't mean it's a soul-based desire yet because your soul is leading you in a, another direction. So continue. Uh, well, well, my conditioning, I, would, I call it my conditioning, my ingrainedness, my stuff that I've inherited from my parents and ancestors as well as my growing up has created me to predominantly act, think and feel in an unloving manner, even though I now consciously wish to move in the direction of more and more love or acting more in harmony with that. But the utter weight and inertia, and call it what you want, the treacleness of it, of living my life—that's what it feels like. <laughs> exactly, that's <laughs> living like. through this conditioning. Yeah. How? What can I do? I mean, my intention is there. How do I go through what I need to go through to be able to more embody harmonious, loving life? All right, firstly, there are a number of ways to handle the situation. From a, um, you, you mentioned the word conditioning for a start. Let's look at conditioning. What is it from your perspective? It's, all right. Um, so it's like... I have been conditioned to think in certain ways, to have certain beliefs, to behave and feel in certain ways. By whom? Right. Uh, my whole environment, school, parents. Okay, so parents... School, yeah. Uh, TV, for example. TV, yeah. Uh, are the three things that really I'm strongly aware of as having affected me. Right, okay. So, and you've called that conditioning. In the, yes, in the sense that it's, it's more driving me than I'm driving it. Yes, I agree it is. But what you haven't seen is the reason why those particular things drive you. So why do they drive you? Any ideas? Why, why do they drive me? I don't know. I feel that I'm... Um, I just feel that I'm being driven. Sometimes I do get a sense, a body sense, that I have that I'm being driven and because I have that sense it lessens the me being controlled by yep. so bringing this sense of awareness lessens it but I still have such it's such an ingrained thing that it's so painful to resist the, the being driven by those conditionings so let's look at uh, what we want to do is step you down into what's really going on so what you notice is the pain of being of when you resist being driven yes you feel pain, yes? Yes. And, and the pain is saying, go back to what you were doing before, basically, isn't it? It's like, go back to letting television control you, or yes, go back to yes. letting what you learn at school control you, or whatever. Yeah. So in other words, it's causing you to revert back to your conditioning. Correct. Yes. Right? And, and why do you find pain so difficult? Oh, out of fear. Okay, so, so there's pain created... And then, of course, there's this aspect of fear, right? And what I'm going to suggest to you is this is the problem for you. It's not your habits or your conditioning. It's your fear of going against your conditioning that is causing the problem. And you're not recognizing or feeling how great that fear is. Okay. You follow yes, me? Yes. Yep. And this is where you're using your will. You've made a choice inside of yourself to use your will to honour your fear, ra, and call it conditioning. So, in other words, you're actually using this term conditioning as a way of distancing yourself ah. from the painful emotion of fear that you're going to need to feel, which is the consequence of a long life living in fear right 
or being, having fears put upon you. And for the majority of us, what we do is we then call it something else, we give it a term that tends to distance ourselves from the personal responsibility of feeling that emotion. So whenever I use the word conditioning, I'm basically blaming my environment for how I'm acting. In other words, I'm not taking personal responsibility for why I act the way the environment tells me to act. And that is because of fear, an emotion that exists inside of me that I'm choosing to not feel. Because if I chose to feel it, I wouldn't need to act in harmony with it anymore. Does that make sense? I understand, yes. Yeah. So, so frequently what happens with free will is we give up our free will to the point where we even, we even to ourselves, tell ourselves that we didn't have will, that we don't have will. In other words, we tell ourselves that the way in which we're expressing our will is all as a result of some kind of conditioning. When the reality is, the reason why we're responding to conditioning is always because of a fear. It's always because of some fear that exists inside of us. Usually it's an emotional fear, but it can even be a physical one. So for example, when we were young, we might have got belted by our parents under certain circumstances. Right? And our fear of violence now causes us then to act as adults in a certain direction. So whenever a similar situation comes up that what came up in our childhood when we got smacked comes up as an adult, we are so afraid of the violence that happened in the past that we choose to go along with the conditioning. So it's the fear, again, driving our desire to respond to the conditioning that is the issue. And we can make a choice or a decision to now feel this fear rather than deny its existence and blame it all on conditioning. And how do you find out? Because it makes sense to me now, but you had to be here to point it out to me. Yep. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known that. So yep. How can I find out more of the underlying things that underlie the labels that I use to cover the emotions? Can I just make it really simple for you? Every single thing that you find hard to do from a loving perspective, you know, in other words, every single, t single time you find it hard to be loving, it's only ever a fear <laughs> <laughs> driving it. Yeah. Nothing else. Right. right? So, so we could do it like this. We could, couldn't we? We could basically say the only thing we need to focus on feeling is a fear. <laughs> right? Every time that we notice ourselves intellectually doing something unloving and thinking that we're being pushed by something or someone or whatever, all it is that's really pushing us is our inability to feel our fear rather than acting to make it go away. That's the only thing that's pushing us, actually. Yeah. Now, if you take that approach, and that's the approach I take in my personal life, and um, you'll find you'll find this fear, that fear, this fear, that fear, the impact that every one of these fears has on your life. And in fact, that's the reason why in discussions about fear with people, I've encouraged them to make a fear list of all of the known fears. And then every time they feel some pain or feel being pushed into an unloving direction, sit down with yourself, feel yourself, and feel, what am I afraid of here? What am I afraid of? And a lot of times you go, oh, I'm afraid of that person. I'm afraid that they will think a certain thing about me. I'm afraid that you know this person over here might harm me some way i'm afraid that my partner my friends my children my <laughs> whoever around me might treat me a certain way if i act in that manner right the main reason why there's not a lot more people coming along to our seminars is because of fear they're afraid that everyone around them will think they've joined a cult or joined a, some kind of you know crazy nutter calling himself jesus type of thing and so they are afraid right it doesn't matter if I make a lot of sense when I speak or anything. They're just afraid. And, and it's the unwillingness to feel the fear that causes us to change our action. Now, when we're unwilling to feel our fear, yes, we are now responding to our conditioning. So, so now the conditioning of what happens throughout our life is going to be hugely involved in what decisions and choices we make. So... So, you know, it will even go down to driving, you know, all, all sorts of daily activities that we're doing. You'll be surprised 
how much fear drives our conditioning even the route we take to work is a lot about fear it's a lot about what's easy what's hard but sometimes I'm aware that I think I'm so I'm going to the shops and I get a sense that I'm I'm reacting to something but I can't connect with the, the fear so go to the shop and try to feel it there <laughs> you know that's what I would do I would act upon the, I would act upon it if I felt a sense of going to do something act upon it and see but be especially sensitive to what kind of feedback I'm getting you know whether I'm being placed in an uncomfortable position what kind of discomfort it is and so forth because remember these are the feedback mechanisms we have to determine what's going on so for the majority of us feeling fear is the most uncomfortable thing we can do would you agree with that for those of you who have tried to feel some fear and and if we range fear from absolute terror which the majority of people have no desire whatsoever to feel right the way through to mild um, you know what would you call it agitation. agitation yeah the kind of agitation that a good cigarette takes away <laughs> right? <laughs> and then 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 in between that range there is a large amount of fear that affects our day-to-day -day lives and we do have a tendency to give it a different name that tends to alleviate the personal responsibility of dealing with it so in other words when we call it conditioning we're basically saying oh but somebody else made it but the problem is is the fear exists within our soul and it's only the choices and decisions we make that are going to release it in other words it's only going to be the exercise of our will that causes its release so if I'm using my will to shut down my fear to control it to keep it under wraps to deny it to use words or terminologies that, that make it go away then my fear is never going to be felt and I'll be driven by it constantly it'll be become my motor it's like wherever you go you, you turn on the motor of fear and that's where you go you know that's where you're going to go every single time whereas once we realize that this is just a feeling that can be felt and we can use our choices and decisions we can use our will as a, in a loving manner to feel it once we make that choice this all we realize it's got nothing to do with the conditioning it's got everything to do with our ability to let go of those let go of our fears and in fact in your day-to-day -day progression the only thing that stops you or usually the only thing that stops most people from being loving is fear that's usually the thing that stops us from being loving so it's very important to see that